Tonight on Property Banter, we reveal a TV tyrant's mega mansion, the five-day course that could turn you into a real estate force, and Russell and Big Mike make beautiful music. Let's do it. It's an elevator. Hello, I'm Tom Barron, coming to you from the Rate My Agent offices. Joining me on the panel, we've got buyer's advocate from Beckett Property, Tabitha Robb, Russell Cambridge, director of Bigot and Scott Richmond, and Mark Armstrong, the grey wiggle. How was our week, everyone? Weekend was good. Collingwood's into the top three, so I'm happy. I'm repre well, subtly representing them okay. on the panel tonight. Yes, I took um, 50 of us elitist scum away for the weekend. Where about? 50? Uh, we went down to uh, Phillip Island just to celebrate the busy period. And I believe we've got a famous person on the panel. Yes, I have heard this. Tell yeah. us what happened. Famous, oh. famous Russell? <laughs> well, yes, I was sitting at a table at a restaurant and come and came over and said, oh, you've got a celebrity at your table. And I'm going, where's that? They go, you're on that property banter show. I went, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Where would you like me to sign? <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait till that happens to me. <laughs> no, even at a family function, even, to someone remember me. <laughs> but some business to get to first. Last week we took a deep dive in Airbnb and took a stab at what we thought it all meant. And take a look. But we're, we're sort of not talking about. What does Airbnb mean? Sort of... No, but like, how are they? <laughs> air, bed, and breakfast. Why air? Because it's the higher up. Buildings. Like air tasker. Air means high. It's not selling cloud. air. No, it's like like air's on. Like it's fancy. Air. In Berlin. on the things. Airbnb. F for fail. Uh, turns out we were all wrong, but I've taken a leaf out of Tabitha's book and done some research. So let's hear from Airbnb co-founder Brian Chesky. And so Joe had three airbeds. He had gone camping and he had kept some airbeds. And we pulled the airbeds out of the closet. We inflated the airbeds and we called it the Airbed and Breakfast. And that's where the name comes from, airbedandbreakfast.com. Now, I've done a bit more research on the origin of fame and internet site names and had a guess how these came about. Uber. Because Remember? isn't Uber like... Isn't <coughs> Uber, more. Yeah, Uber's more. like it's Uber good, it's really good sort of thing, isn't it? Well, Uber means super in German. So it used to be called Ubercab, as in supercab. But then they um, just changed it to just to Uber. My dog was saved, was in a river and it was drowning. And this man came and he just jumped and he pulled it out. And I said, oh my God, thank you so much. And I realised he was German. And I said, oh my God, thank you. And he's gone, that's okay, I help animals for a living. And I said, oh, you're a vet? He says, vet? I'm fucking soaking. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia, what do we think? Well, the, the end of it's from Encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. But Very isn't good. Wiki, because you have WikiLeaks. What's a Wiki? Oh, uh, witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yes, it's witchcraft. Yeah. No. I, knew it. I, I can't believe you that. Wiki means quick in Hawaiian. The Wiki Wiki bus is the Honolulu International Airport shuttle and the Pedia is from the word encyclopedia. Who Yahoo. Where have we got a Yahoo from? Lasu or something. The creators wanted to name that took less than three minutes to say, so they did the old uh, Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, I think, I yeah. 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 Woo right. So all these names is actually very in depth there, but where did Rate My Agent come from? The name, like... Where did rundown. Rate My Agent come yeah. from? Yeah. It's a bit of a tricky well, one. Where do you think? Like, the imagination. Right. The, the amount wanted, of man hours put into really making that happen. Three minutes. What about, like, Ragent? Who? Ragent. Like, Ragent. like it's there. Between the, the, the three founders, we came up with it. And really, it was like I said, finding a business name nowadays is really hard mm. because all of the names are taken. So rate really My forward. Agent wasn't... What does that tell you? No, right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got it all here on Property Banter. The very latest real estate headlines, check. Opinions galore, check. Experts in real estate, well, as my mother used to say, you can't have it all. <laughs> but remember, if our panellists rate a current news article, they'll swipe right. And if not, left. Ready, panel? Ready. Ready. First headline. Our new PM. Experts reveal what it means for the real estate industry. 
I don't think ScoMo will have any impact on, on what happens in the real estate industry. The only impact it will have is the Libs, Liberal government is likely to be turfed out at the next election and Labor government policy is to make changes to negative gearing. Um, I'm not convinced that they will do that. Uh, I think the market's softening uh, on its own accord. But um, that's the likely effect. What a load of bollocks. What a waste of time. Let's talk about something else. Like, Someone sitting at the property desk going, what could I, I want to join in here. Let's write a story. PM <laughs> reveals what it means to the industry. What a load of crap. Three left. Three left. Three yes. together. <laughs> Next headline. Auctions. Shows over folks. Nothing to see here. We're certainly going through a, a slow <coughs> period of auctions. They're not as entertaining as they once were. Um, a lot of properties are passing in and selling afterwards. So I think it's, uh, I'm a right. Tabitha. I'm a left on this one, to be honest. I just think it really comes down to the auctioneer, for starters, and how much theatre they have. Um, also, you know, the <laughs> crowd, the bidding activity, the buzz in the she air. Is, hey, I did an auction without a bid the other day and I was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you sitting? I'm a right on this. I think at the moment they're, they're struggling a little bit. I'm a left on this one. Uh, I love auctions, I love the theatrics, and yeah, we're going through a slow patch, but ultimately, I think they're great. There are yeah. some auctions that are a flop, but basically not all of them. Next headline. Sun sets on dodgy property developers. Well, I like this because I've, I've had a problem with this for a long time. But basically this is talking about sunset clauses, meaning that, that after a particular date, um, the developer can rescind the contract or cancel the co contract and, and on sell it a second time. And the um, buyer does get the first buyer does get their deposit back though. They, oh, they get their yeah. deposit back. But what it does is it means that if the developer, if the market moves and is they believe they can get a which higher price, which it had price, been doing, which it had mm. been doing, um, it means that they can take it off the person who bought it and show that commitment, you know, months or years before, mm. and then on sell it. It was a dodgy thing that the developers were doing, and I'm a a hard ride on this. I've met done. a couple of buyers this has happened to, um, one especially in Port Melbourne, and it's just so upsetting and disappointing for the buyer that's had their heart set on on this place that they've been looking to move into. Yeah. So is everyone on the same page? Are we three agree? Yeah, three yeah. rights. Yep. Yeah. All three going. agree. Last week we met property tycoon husband and wife competitors Mary Stone and Freedom Funding, who were duking it out for top spot of the winter season. Mary Stone was coming first, Freedom Funding fourth, but a week's a long time in Property Tycoon, so let's see who came out on top. Way! Well done, Mary Stone! <laughs> Mary Stone? Well done! <laughs> there you go. So, if we take a look at the leaderboard, Mary Stone's won. Uh, good old Freedom Funding, he will be making breakfast in bed. He's dropped down from fourth to fifth. I think what it shows is Mary Stone's um, idea of just choosing properties that are going to sell. Mm to yeah. give her a shot at winning is uh, has proven to be um, well she's the she's the tycoon so the spring season is starting this weekend and we've got a much bigger prize this uh, this season Tell us. it's going to be a five thousand dollar prize wow magic are we eligible uh, no what? no but you are eligible <laughs> you are eligible for um, for bragging rights Oh, and I also, love those. we're going to be giving away a weekly prize of gold class movie tickets. Fabulous. Um, so Can we win those? No. This week, we're going to tip on 7 Jason Street in East Burwood. I like this property. I grew up in East Burwood and uh, in a very, very similar orange brick house. So there's a bit of nostalgia. You know what they I say, say never buy with emotion. And all I'm hearing is a lot of emotion. It is. You're a very emotional person. I'm a very emotional person. I, you know. I've got history, not in this particular house. History, but a, a house. <laughs> got a lot more than that I do. Right. <laughs> so the agent is suggesting somewhere between nine hundred to a million dollars. So download the app from the App Store. First round mm -hmm. on Saturday. I'm excited. Five thousand dollar prize, weekly prizes. Ah, it's going to be huge. He's a man who celebrities call on when they want him to stay off their property and never come within fifty feet of their homes ever again. But luckily for Russell, he always manages to just slip through the side gate and click away. Russell, show us your pap snaps and we'll try to guess this famous homeowner. Nicknamed the Birdhouse. This house has the honour of being the most expensive house on Rhode Island, America. I reckon that's Billy Joel's house. It once belonged to the heiress of Campbell Soup's fortune, right. mm. but the current owner courts a lot more controversy. Oh, lawyer. Oh. It's a sweeping 16,000 mm. square foot shingle 
style house with six bedrooms, six, yes, eight bathrooms. Go figure, there's more bathrooms than bedrooms. Yeah. And a huge bench. Ah. Oh. Mm. Oh, the wicker a... room is a recreation, uh, is a recreation is of a barn interior where the owner kept her own counsel oh, her. and wrote best-selling book, Don't Pee on My Leg and Tell Me It's Raining. Oh! oh. Who's that? Uh, it's, Exterior um, patio features a heated terrace yes. and a side bar. Who? I've got it! Who? It's the judge! Judge it's Judy? Jude. It's the Judes! Is it Judge Judy? Absolutely it is! Judging by the sale price, nine million. The owner definitely lives up to her title of being the highest paid woman on TV. Is she the highest paid really? woman on TV? Really? She is. She's no, the judge. I don't think she just she... really? out justice left, right, and centre. Well, she's I love been her. on TV long enough. All rise, Judge Judy. Well done, Tommy. The judge. Yeah, that's yeah. a good get. Tommy, marvelous work. I think I'm winning this. I think I'm winning this. Question: yes. Have you been before the great lady? Before the great lady. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle me this. Would you take medical advice from a doctor who'd only studied medicine for five days? Would you leave your child with a childcare worker who'd only completed a five day course? Well, in Victoria and New South Wales, it only takes five days to become a real estate agent. Which means you're effectively putting one of your life's biggest decisions in the hands of someone who's done a Netflix binge on real estate. Should we be concerned? I mean, this is why we developed Rate My Agent, was to, to provide some transparency so people could see how experienced someone was. Um, but, you know, real estate has a, has a significant problem in, in the churn rate of, of agents going through the industry. I'm not sure what the number is, Russell, but it could be high as sort of, a you know, t mm. 20. It, it'd be one of the highest turnovers in any industry. There's really no clear, you know, qualification to say that, that I'm, I'm a, a five-year member of, of this organisation or I, I've, I've had this experience. It's and again, a very, it's very competitive industry out there. If you don't have a track record, if you don't have experience, it's very hard to get a listing. So Let's hear from someone who really, know, <laughs> who really knows what he's talking about. Um, we've got a, a clip here from John Cunningham. John, John was the, the ex-president of the REI New South Wales, but now he chairs the REIA, the Real Estate Industry of Australia's Professional um, professionalism committee. So let's hear from John. In relation to education training in the industry, in the real estate industry and where we're heading in the future uh, and what I call the era of professionalism. For far too long now we've just allowed these things to decline. We can blame governments, we can blame whoever we want, but the reality is industry's not actually stepped up and done anything about it. They've allowed it to happen and as a result, we've got a lot of people who are just completely unskilled, untrained uh, and out there creating havoc in a marketplace, which then reflects on why um, our approval rating um, and credibility rating and ethic ratings are all so low. So where does it start? And foundation of everything is education. Unless you get the education right, it's the, it's the foundation on which everything is built. I've done some secret shopping in Sydney and it's been appalling. I gave it a 90% fail rate on when I've looked around at some open homes and the knowledge that people have, don't even know where the sewer line is in a property, don't even know what it's made out of, don't understand the legislation they're working under and don't understand exactly uh, what their roles and responsibilities are. The consumer deserves more, the consumer desires more, so to my mind, no excuses. We have to lift this bar, we've got to lift our game and it's up to us to do it. I think John makes some really, really valid points and, and I, think that, I think that good agents will benefit from this. I think. Um, what, what happens to a good agent in the industry is when they're up against a really inexperienced agent, the inexperienced agent tends to do two things, and Russell, I think you'll agree with this. They tend to drop their fee um, to be competitive, and they tend to tell the vendor that the property is worth more than it actually is. Well, I'm just a big fan of learning in general, so I don't think any of this is a bad thing. If we all learn more, gain more experience, more knowledge, both the property management side and the sales side, it can't be a bad thing, to be honest. Really, education is the, is the only way to do it. The problem is, Mark, the, the industry doesn't reward you for your qualification. It rewards you for how many listings you sell and how many properties you manage. But, but what will happen is, is when you lower the bar so far, um, it's harder to to get listings because there's so many people out there that you're fighting with. If you, I mean, in our system, to give you an idea, um, we, we've been collecting agent profiles for, for a few years and we've got around about 80,000 uh, agent profiles on the system after, after four years. Yet only 35,000 of those have sold a property within the last 12 months. 
So more than 50% of those agents have either not sold a property or, or entered and left the industry within that period of time. I think we all agree that John Cunningham's on the right track. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, obviously, but, but I think we all agree that... that uh, he's on the right like track, but don't tarnish us all with being uneducated and not having the right qualifications and that we're all unethical. That's the sort of talk I don't like. I think it should be, the dialogue should be a bit nicer. What, what we'll do enough. is in a future episode, we'll get John on the panel, but um, let's, let's take up this topic in a future episode with John on the panel. It's a state in America that's often summed up with the one phrase, only in Florida. If there's a photo that could sum up Florida, it's this one. Yes, a crocodile riding a pool noodle. <laughs> And if there's one headline that can sum up Florida, look at it. <laughs> Florida man accused of assaulting roommate with a slice of pizza. Basically, Florida's our Gold Coast. So in the spirit of extremes, meet Floridian real estate agent Big Mike Bridges. Drink him in. Looking for something fun to do? We've got the perfect solution. A Forbes Property Group open house. This Sunday from 12 to 2, Realtor Mike Bridges will be your host for this extravaganza. This five-bedroom, three-bath pool home is packed with features and sure to please. We've searched high and low for the best and refreshments. A glass of wine and some cheese would be refreshing on a Sunday afternoon. Would it not? and stay for the amazing entertainment. Open Gangnam Style. I don't like his uh, thing, but he reminds me of you, Russell. Oh, I think he's doing a Russell. I like his your American <laughs> counterpart. <laughs> you guys could just do a complete this life swap. Use. I've got and copyright on this. So, Big Mike Bridges or American Russell. American Russell. Banana. He's our American Russ. A freedom rush. Well done, Russ. He's actually my cousin. I can tell. Yeah, he's shortened his name to Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your show for this week. Don't forget, we want you in on the banter. If you've got any tips, stories, or suggestions, just send them in. That's where the graphic comes up, Tabitha. Um, and we'll. <laughs> this is a professional at that's work. That's right. <laughs> so thank you, Tabitha. Mark, Russell. Um, I think I finally uh, found the source of our heat. See you okay. next week. <laughs> <laughs>